record. <clears throat> All right, guys, I'm going to do a quick rundown for this for you guys. Um, I'm not going to go too heavy into it on this call, uh, but I do look forward to making sure that um, all the uh, everybody that's new and brand new to using MetaTrader does get caught up with this training. So I'll go ahead and uh, issue that specific training on another night. Uh, but just a quick rundown, guys. <clears throat> you know, when you do have your MetaTrader training, uh, it's going to be right here. So you're going to have your pairs on the left hand side. You know, you have the Euro USD, the GBP USD, USD JPY, USD CAD, anything that has USD, consider that a major pair. Anything that has USD, major pair. Now, you're going to see Euro USD. Obviously, that's two currencies to, together, right? So that's two currencies together. The first currency is gonna be known as the base currency. And I hope you guys are taking notes. <clears throat> Grab a pen and paper, you know, go to take notes. So note takers are money makers. You're gonna learn a whole bunch of cliche type stuff from, you know, in the industry, but nonetheless, the very first pair, it's the base pair. That's always, always, always gonna be a value of one, right? One. The base pair is always equals one. And then the pair that, that it's right next to, that's gonna be the price pair, right? So you're gonna you're gonna see what I mean by that in a minute. Um, so cool. Now that you got that down, um, on the right hand side, uh, those are like the entry, the the buy and the sell price, right? So if you want to buy one or you want to sell one, um, those are the prices right there. So that's where it's, you know, it kind of just takes the spread out. <clears throat> if I toggle to that one, you're gonna see the spread is twenty, right here. Right. And then, you know, it has the low price and the high price. So if you're going to enter, meaning if you're going to go, if you're going to buy, you know, or if you're going to sell, um, it, it'll make more more sense when I go into the charts for you guys. Um, but just know that the spread right here, the spread means it. that's how much you're going to pay to play. Right. So um, if you think it's free to jump into a, 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 a trade, you got to pay a little price, right? You got to pay to play, if that makes sense. So you pay to play, right? And then you're going to look, you're going to look at the spread. So you, you definitely don't want to jump into a pair that has just like a, a huge spread. You know what I mean? Like, let's just say um, Euro USD has a 1.9 pip spread. I'll, I'm down for that. But if you start seeing something crazy, you know, like you see a 79 for the for the Aussie and the and the uh, New Zealand dollar, and that's eight pips to play, right? So if you assign 10 bucks per pip, you're down 80 bucks from the start, right? So, <clears throat> I mean, if you're not correct, you'll make up for it, but, you know, you kind of just want to be weary. Sometimes there's crazy spreads, like you'll see 250. Hell no, stay away from that. Because if you see 250, that's like a 25 pip spread. That means you start down 25 pips. And it's, it's just not even really worth it, right? Unless you're like really, really like banking on this to shoot all the way up or down. Cool. Um, actually, let me pull up the chat here. I want to see if anybody has any questions. Mm -hmm. Pay to play. Yep. Any other questions, guys? Moving on. <clears throat> cool. That's the chart. So the chart right here, guys, you're going to look just a quick refresher. Um, Barry, can you tell me what chart we're in? 15 minutes. Yeah. How do you know? Well, because I got learned the other day and then I did some studying. Oh, you turn up. Uh, what on this screen tells you that we're on a 15 minute chart? Top left. Bam, yeah, there you go, Fred. <clears throat> top left, that tells you what chart. So M1, that's a one minute chart. All that means is that each candle is one minute. It lasts one minute before it moves on to the next one. So right now you're watching the price action of, of, a, of a one minute candle. And then, you know, when the next minute hits, it's going to go on to the next candle. That's it. If you're on an M5, that's a five minute candle. That means every candle lasts five minutes before it moves on to the next one. M15, if you're intraday trading, never leave the M15 chart. That is your baby. 
And I'll explain more of that in a second. M30, that's the 30 minute charts. Then you got the hours and you got the, the H4. <clears throat> Can anybody guess what the D1 is? The day. One yes, day. sir. The one day, one day candle. So each candle <clears throat> shows you the price action per day. And then obviously you have the week and the month candle. A little fun fact, you guys, because if you could just, you know, these are the months. It dates all the way back to December 2000, or uh, sorry, before December 2000. So, you know, it looks like Forex started back in like 1999 or something like that, or 98. Isn't that pretty cool? September yeah, 1st, right. 1999 was the first candle, <laughs> uh, at least on MetaTrader. <laughs> That's pretty sick, huh? Yeah. Um, if let's see, if you guys, if you guys are uh, <clears throat> not actively speaking, uh, would you guys mind pausing your uh, or hitting the mute button, please? Cool. All right. So really quickly, right? So I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna choose a pair. I'm gonna choose GBP USD, right? So what this is, guys, is um, remember how I told you that the G that the GBP USD the first th the first pair is the what? Somebody just write it on the chat. The great British pound. Hell yeah, absolutely. And and how what value is the great British pound? It's Looks like one dollar and like thirty five cents. I can't really see on my screen, but it's on the right, right hand side of the of your graph. Mm, absolutely. So the great British pound, that's the first pair, it's a value of one. And then the USD, yeah, because it's the base pair, right? Good job, Tony. The GBP, the first pair, it's always a value of one. And the second pair, you're going to find the price right here, right here on the sideline. So what is that telling us right now? It's telling us in the current market condition, if you can see, you know, <clears throat> so it takes 1.35098 USD to buy one GBP. I'm gonna say that again. So it's 1.35098 USD to purchase one GBP. Oh, because that's the base. The base is always a value of one. And then the price of the pair is, thank you, very appreciate it, is always on the right hand side. So down here, right? The price was down here. So you know how they say you wanna buy low and sell high? Yeah, that's what you wanna do. You buy when the GBP USD is only a dollar and thirty-two cents, and then you sell it when it's a dollar and thirty-five. Now, obviously, you're you're making way more money than three cents, right? Um, because you assign the the value for it. <clears throat> but you know that's just the basic fundamentals of it, without going too deep into it. Any questions before I move on to uh, to the next one? All right, cool. Well, so <clears throat> something happened last night, right? Um, a little scary. So, you know, I lost the trade last night. I was so sad because I was trying to go for all blue. Um, by a hair, by a hair. And that's because I fell asleep. I fell asleep. I, I, I wasn't patient for the right setup and I learned from my mistake. Um, but I, I fell asleep, right? I set a stop loss and it barely hit the stop like right past that stop loss if i was awake i would have seen that and moved the stop loss just another inch so it wouldn't hit it so you're about to see an ugly little screen right now bam so <clears throat> i'm cool with this i'm gonna let it run because i know the direction that the market's going and which is what i'm about to teach you guys right now here after after i go over this meta trade i'm gonna spend about the next four minutes going over this here and answering any questions and i'm gonna move on to a strategy that you guys should implement in order to really take your trade level you know to shoot it off the moon right so cool <clears throat> all this is guys it shows you your statistics right so the, my balance is i got two two point you know <clears throat> I got to keep up with my Alabama updates, but I got $2,648. That's my balance, you know, equity. That's just like, um, you know, your balance plus or minus what, you know, all the money that's going on down here. And it tells you right there on the top, you know, your free margin, your margin percent level. So how much percentage you can win. <clears throat> that's like the base info, you know, of, of, of your screen. And, you know, obviously it tells me, you know, what the trade was. CHF was a sell with a full size lot. 
Um, so if I want to place a trade, cool. Um, what you guys want to do is every time you want to place a trade, you can do it two ways, right? You can either go straight to the pair right here, hold it, and then hit trade. Or, you know, if you're just right there, just hit that plus button, right? And again, if, if you're not, you know, if you, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go over this again for you guys, but I just want to do that quick introduction for all the new people. I'm um, just so you kind of get a basic understanding of what's going on when I introduce this next part to you here. So <clears throat> GBP USD, you can hit that drop down button and you'll find all the pairs of trade. Right, so uh, instant execution, cool. So let's see if it actually lets me put in a trade. Um, GBP USD, um, I'm gonna just full full on yes here, just because it's uh, you know just for the sake of just showing you guys. Um, buy, cool. So right there, it shows up right there. Now. Keep in mind, look at the lot size, right? So this is called the lot size. <clears throat> Remember how I told you if it, if you buy at 1.32 cents, a dollar and 32 cents, and you sell at 135, you're not actually winning three cents. Cool. The reason you're not winning three cents is because you can modify how much dollar amount you want to assign each pip. So the pip is the price movement in the market, right? So a pip is a point in percentage, right? Percentage. Yeah. yeah. Hell, he did his homework. That's what I'm talking about. So every time it moves up one metric, that's a pip, right? If I assign the dollar per pip, or here, let me let me back it up. 0 0.01 lot size. Somebody write on the chat with how much that is. 10 cent. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Hell yeah. Give him a chance. No, I was kidding. No, that's good, though. That's 10 cents. What's that? Per pit. All you really got to do is move that decimal point backwards and it tells you 10 cents per pip. This one right here is a dollar per pip. All you, yep. All you got to do is move that decimal point one backwards and it tells you. Now, what's this right here? Ooh, is that a dollar per pip or, or what is it? <clears throat> Remember, all you got to do is move that decimal point one spot backwards and then you got how much you're assigning that. You can even do. 550 per pit, right? You can do 539 per pit. You know, you can get crafty with it. You know, I don't really recommend, I'm not suggesting it, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying. But cool, you assign how much money you want per pit. If, if you feel like you're balling and you want to do 500 bucks per pit, well, you know, sky's the limit, partner. But cool, for the sake of the drill, zero one. That's 10 cents per pip. Um, I'm gonna shoot my stop loss. No, the stop loss and the take profit, those are just the boundaries that you're setting. So when you go back to the graph, you have those stop loss and take profits. <clears throat> um, it don't really, I'm not really gonna you know, put it, but let's just say I put my stop loss right here because I hit a buy, so I think it's going up. I put my stop loss right here, right? That means if it goes all the way down and the graph starts hitting and it hits that line that I just set, it's going to take you out of the trade, right? But it's good because it's it's going to prevent you from losing more money, right? You want it to take you out right here because it's going to stop you from losing. Because usually when you hit a reversal, you're, you're predicted wrong, then you know you don't want to uh, um, you don't want to uh, what's it called? Uh, keep keep you know just letting it ride. You want it to take you out, so that's good. Stop losses are good. Never ever 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 ever. ever. Ever, 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 ever place a trade without a stop loss. Ever. <clears throat> right? You never want to do that. Now, take profit's a different story. So take profit, right? Because I said I thought it was going to go up. So I set my take profit right up here, right? What does that mean? You just kind of created a little zone, like a little tunnel, right, for your trade. It's like that game Snake or something like that, right? If it goes up one way, or I might be talking about the wrong game, but it's like on those little like Nokia phones, like dee -dee 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 -dee. you just kind of just push it up and down to try to avoid those things. And if it touches, it kind of takes you out. <clears throat> I create a little tunnel, right? This is my take profit up here and my stop loss down here. So if it goes down here, I lost. But if it hits up here, I win. Like, yay, right? That's profit. It takes you out of the trade with secured profits. It takes you out of the trade with secured profits or, or secured loss, which is good. And what I say about stop losses, 
Never, ever, 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 ever enter a trade without a stop loss. Because <clears throat> you can forget about it, fall asleep, whatever, and then your account is gonzo. I mean, if you have a demo, go ahead, try it out. See for yourself. Cool. Actually, I could just show you. I could have just shown you right here. <clears throat> Boom. Chart. And I have a little more time. Cool. Because I just told that I was, I don't have to do the opportunity call anymore. Thank God. <clears throat> no cap. I've done it twice. There you go, Frederick. Bitch, you ain't going to do it a third. <laughs> so here you go. That's a, that's a stop loss. Oh, uh, fun fact, guys. Um, if you twist your phone sideways, got a nice little, yeah, a lot more of a visibility. So I can actually, uh, if I just tap it right there, you can see. So I predicted this was a sell, right? My analysis told me it was a sell, and I, I know it's going to go down, right? <clears throat> this is GBPCHF from last night. I'm pissed because and I'll, I'll show you why. But um, my analysis is still correct, I feel. I'm, I'm confident it is, but I was just like a hair too short, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But right here, there's a green line that you – there's a little red line up here that you probably can't see. Um, but I put my stop loss up there, right? And then this is this was my sell. This is where I sold, but I don't have a take profit because I plan on just watching it. And I wanna ride, let it ride all the way down. And then I decide what I wanna take it out, right? Cause I know it's gonna go down. So I'm gonna leave an open trade, but if I take a profit, if I'm gonna assign a take profit, I can put it like right here. And then when that hits, boom. It takes me out of the trade with a profit. Does that make sense for everyone? Does anyone have <laughs> questions on it? Um, kind of basic level understanding of trading, but I do know we have some new people. Hey, Ira, are you still there? Yeah, we can't hear you. He's still recording, but it's like his mic cut out. Yeah, we lost you, Ira. We can't hear you. No, I think he got disconnected. It's frozen at 524. No, we still can't. All right, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, beautiful. All right, I was tripping. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> um, so yeah, um, I think I just kind of lost. It's like it's frozen or something like that. So here, I'm just gonna reset it real quick. I'm gonna leave. All right, cool. <clears throat> um, think of some questions meanwhile, but uh, did I ask, did I, was everybody able to understand it? You know, uh, were, were you guys comprehensive? Is it, did I throw you off anywhere? Um, did I confuse you anywhere? I know I kind of just quickly passed it, but I, I do want to make sure that everybody's question is answered. One, 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 cool, thank you. All right, thumbs up, awesome. Appreciate that, that lets me know that <clears throat> I can move on. Leave. 
All right, cool. Uh, you guys can hear me, right? Uh, just another mic check. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Oh, look, I'm up in blue right now. Cool. I'm up 10 cents. That's that's one pip. I just won one pip. Nice. <clears throat> All right, cool. So look at this. Bam. <laughs> I was a little mad last night. <laughs> right. Um, I went all in, but that was patience, which is cool. It's still fine. I, you know, I was hitting blue, you know, pretty much minus those those little 24, 21 cents that that stuff right there that that um, I entered a trade there, but then like a split second later, I decided that I didn't want to actually write it out because I wanted to go to sleep. So I just kind of canceled out. So that's why I'm red there. But aside from that, look at all that 118 in blue, you know, 118, 144, 355. It's just blue. Blue, blue, blue until last night. You know, I was de that definitely could have been in blue, but you know, I'm about to show you literally what happened. Cool. <clears throat> so moving on, um, if we have no questions about this, then I'd like to move on to a nice little trading strategy. Uh, for beginners, how would I learn that 0 0.10 is 10 cents and so forth? So there's actually a chart, you know, um, there's actually a chart uh, somewhere in your, in your training. And I'm sure somebody around here can uh, find one and post it for you. But um, it's just um, it's just a rule of thumb when it comes to trading. Uh, yeah, cool, thank you, Barry. It's a rule of thumb when it comes to trading that you know all you have to do is move the decimal point one backwards, and that's it. Because a standard lot is one point zero zero, so you know a standard pip movement, as the forex market would want to consider, it would be ten dollars, right? <clears throat> so. Um, that that would be considered a standard lot, like ten bucks a pip. That's standard, right? Because when you're in the business of forex trading, you're not really trying. Nobody wants to make a dollar a standard. Yeah, Vlad, nice. Cool. All right, cool. Is that Russian, Bulgarian? Yeah. yeah. Love it. That was lit, huh? All right, cool. I'm gonna exit here. And I'm going to move on, guys. <clears throat> okay, beautiful. All right, guys. So time for the good stuff. You guys came here to learn how to trade, right? <clears throat> Some of you I've already introduced this to. Others of you are going to be brand new to this. Others of you are going to think I'm full of shit and others of y'all are gonna be like why doesn't anybody ever talk about this right so it's probably gonna be mixed emotions in the crowd but when you actually pay attention to what i'm about to show you it's gonna make perfect sense and what my goal is here is i want to reduce the amount of information that you guys are taking and i want to narrowly focus you on one specific method that is 90 to 95 percent success of a hit so what everything that you're learning right now, <clears throat> yeah, and, and you know, I'll, I'll talk about that stuff, you know, um, what you're learning right now, a lot of technical analysis, a lot of, a lot of, you know, overwhelming type information, you know, I want to pretty much help you eliminate what you don't need to learn right now. That is my goal. I want to help eliminate what you don't need to learn to be a profitable trader. Now, keep in mind, everybody can choose their own path, right? So you can decide to choose uh, what path of trading you want to take after your two-week syllabus. So consider your two-week syllabus like high school, right? Oh, I'm in high school. Cool. Once I graduate, you get to choose what college you want to go to. I'll consider that you want to choose what type of trader you want to become. You can become a binary trader, which means you can trade volumes of money within the seconds. You can make $1,000 in 30 seconds, or you can lose $1,000 in 30 seconds. You can be that type of trader <clears throat> that, you know, um, I saw, if, if you ever get a chance to watch binary and chill calls, by the way, those are sick. It feels like a racehorse, like a racetrack. Um, so I highly, you know, suggest just watching for the show. Uh, you're probably gonna be like, what the hell's going on? But yeah, it's natural. <clears throat> um, you can trade uh, support and resistance. 
coming out of high school. You could trade technical analysis coming out of high school. You could be divergence trader, you know, coming out of high school. Or you could do a, a what I call is a market maker method, right? And what I'm going to show you guys today is the market maker method. The market maker method, it reduces any sort of technical analysis. You know, in fact, that's bullshit when it comes to this method. So almost anything that you guys learn, this is why I'm saying that some of you guys can be like, oh, you're full of shit, man. <clears throat> that's because what you're you're about to what you're about to learn almost kind of disqualifies everything that you've already learned up to this point. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and share my screen. <clears throat> All right, cool beans. Pull the chat real quick, cool. All right, move this stuff around. Get myself a little situated. Beautiful, all right, cool, all right. So what the market maker method is, guys, <clears throat> right now, maybe, you know, if you're, if you're brand new to this, uh, somebody might've told you that when you're trading in the Forex market, it's the buyers versus the sellers, right? You know, the, the, the green are the buyers. The, the reds are the sellers. They're against each other. Wow, who's winning? That's bullshit. The real people who are pushing the markets are called the market makers. And a lot of people don't know this, which, which is, is weird to me. I really don't know why that's weird, but a lot of people don't know this. They think it's genuinely the buyers versus the sellers pushing the market, which is definitely not. What, what, who's pushing the market are the market makers. And they look like this. These guys right here, these are the banks. These are, this is the Forex market. These are the people who are moving the market. Right, so you are up against them. It's not buyers versus sellers. It's not you versus me. You are up against them. <clears throat> Their job is to keep the banks profitable, to keep the, 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 the money moving, right? Their job is to take your money. Their job is to take retail traders money. That's why they're there. They're there to take your money. <clears throat> they want to induce you to take a position in the market, knowing everything you know about technical analysis. And trust me, they know everything about technical analysis and they use that against you. They use that for your own, for their own gain. So they're going to, they're going to drive the market one way, <clears throat> right? And what they have is a strategy that I'm about to show you guys, right? So consider it this way, what you want to do is you don't want to think like a retail technical analysis trader. Oh, there's the flagpole. Oh, you step. There's a, a, a high, a low high, high low. Cool. You, you move your stop loss there. All that little small stuff. <clears throat> I, I'll tell you where it does work. Oh, I'll show you guys where it does work. But what I'm talking about right now is the people, if you want those 90 to 95% success wins, and I'm not talking about the little small baby wins, I'm talking about those huge wins. Right? I'm talking about those two, three hundred dollars per 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 contract per trade type wins, where you walk out in a single day with upwards of two thousand dollars type of trading. That's what I'm about to show you guys right now. Right? Uh, drop some ones if you're ready for this shit. Hype me up. Give me some. Let's go. Let's go. Who else wants to learn it? MacBook Pro, Charlene, Day. Let's go, Stephanie. All right, cool. All right, we see day again, let's go. <clears throat> All right, guys, so remember, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to trade in line with them, right? We wanna learn their behavior. We wanna know how they think, what their plan is going into the session. And we wanna do exactly that. What we don't wanna do is trade against them because that is going backwards. You're going ass backwards with that. So we're gonna learn their behaviors and their psychology in the market. And then every single time it's, every, it's, it's copy paste because they do it every single day the same way. And that's what I'm about to show you guys. So cool, beautiful. Now that you guys know that there's actual people pushing the markets using strategies against you, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys and dive into the charts. <clears throat> First, I'm gonna exit out some of the stuff. Cool. All right. 
<clears throat> Beautiful. <clears throat> All right, guys. So when you're when you're trading, it, it's always nice to pick a pair, right? So I'm married to GU. GU means Great British Pound US dollar. GJ, Great British Pound Japanese yen. GN, Great British Pound New Zealand. You probably pick up the trend on your own, right? But GU is what I like to trade. That that's that's my thing. <clears throat> right? So let me go ahead and show you guys what it is. Now I'm gonna be I'm gonna be repetitive at times, but that's just so I can hammer the strategy for you. I'm, I'm trying to hammer it so you guys get it. <clears throat> cool. All right. So I'm gonna zoom in right here. All right, I'll go ahead and just do that one since already it's already loaded. All right, guys, cool. So first thing first, London is by far the most volatile session in the world. If you really, really, really want to make the big bucks, you trade London session, right? And I know what you, you might be thinking, uh, Barry's on top of the Asian range. Yeah, <clears throat> she knows, so is Tony. So <clears throat> I know what you're thinking. Yeah, but the London session is too late. You know, I'm, I'm sleeping by that time. It's like two in the morning, five in the morning. Cool. Well, there's, there's basically three suggestions for you at that point. If you really, really want to make money, <clears throat> one, you can move to Hawaii. That wouldn't be a problem time-wise. Second, you can just get over it. Or third, you can find something else to do. Find a different profession. By far, the most volatile session is the London session. That is where you're going to make your money. And that's why I've been staying up all night, every single night with a group of us traders. <clears throat> you know, I know some of you guys were there last night. Shout out to you guys. But you are really going to see your gains in, in, the, in the London market. Reason why is look at all this stuff, right? Before the London market, look at, look at the charts. How much action is there really, right? So what I highlighted here was the Asian range, and that means that's the Asian session. So I highlighted the beginning of the Asian session to the end of the Asian session, because after the end of the Asian session begins the London session. Now look for yourself the difference between the Asian session and the London session. Ooh. Ah. So much more difference. <clears throat> so much more money. So much more volatility. A lot more liquidity. This is where you're going to make your money is in the London session. So the strategy behind that is cool. Never, ever, 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 ever trade in consolidation. So when it's like this right here, where it's just barely moving, there's no point. You can scalp it. Now that's where technical analysis comes in, right? You want to use technical analysis? Cool. Use it, use it here. Technical analysis is not a high percentage trading style. Might, might, that's like 60%, maybe 65%. Right, so whatever you're learning about technical analysis, that's probably for you to do throughout the day. <clears throat> and I kind of just, kind of just hit me earlier. I'm like, damn, why, why, how come we don't learn, you know, market makers instead? Like, why is, you know, why, why are we still learning technical analysis? Because maybe because of the time that you guys are awake, that's probably the best time to use technical analysis because you can't really use the market makers as efficiently. I mean, you could, <clears throat> but as efficiently as the time that you're sleeping at least for East Coast people, right? So given that, boom, let's go right into the strategy, guys. So this is, this is what's going on. This is the behavior that they're pushing right here. And I hope you see how repetitive it is and how easy it is once you figure it out, watch. So you always start off the session highlighting the Asian range. That's the purple box. That's the beginning of the Asian to the end of the session from the lowest point of the, of, the, of the session to the highest point of the session. Cool, I squared, I rectangled that off. Now, after that is the beginning of London. What does this do? You can see it's obvious to the, just, just to the eye, it's just going straight down, straight down. It's like, damn. 
So what first of all, what they're doing is once you start seeing a large vector candle, right? What does that do to your emotions? That gets you excited. That gets you, that gets you, oh shit, the market's moving. Their job is to get you into the market because they can't make money if you're not in the market. You're useless to them if you're not in the market. <clears throat> Completely useless to them if you're not in the market. And if you're, um, if you're just joining in, uh, just make sure you guys have your, your uh, microphones on mute, please. <clears throat> but you're completely useless to them if you're not in the market. So they're gonna shoot these large candles right there to get you excited. Oh, it's going bearish, it's going bearish, it's going down. Sell, 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 hit sell, let's go. Let's make some money, woo, sell. Now, what happens when you hit sell, right? You're, it's a contract, AKA contract, you can't take it back. Once you enter a trade, you can't take it back. So, AKA contract. Now, if you think it's sell, you're gonna hit, you're gonna start entering, right? And that means your take prop is gonna be down here. Watch my mouse if you, if you guys are on the screen. Watch my mouse. So, all the take profits, you're gonna set them down here. Cool. What does that, what does that mean about your stop losses? Where are those at? Where does technical analysis teach you to place your stop loss? Anybody, anybody, you can go ahead and, you know, unmute yourself. You want to answer that? Above, above. Above, above what? 35 pips above the highest point, <clears throat> highest point of the day. Um, that's market makers. I'm talking about technical analysis. <laughs> technical analysis people are taught to place the stops right here. So right here, they see all the contracts stacking up right here, guys, right? So if you hit sell, all the stop losses are gonna be right here, right? So what do they do? They fake you out. At the beginning of the Asian station session, the first major move is the fake out. Remember that, take notes, write that down, that is key. You're gonna see that trend often. At the beginning of the Asian session, the first major move is always the fake out. The reason why it's the fake out is because if they fake, if they push the charts, if there's money sitting up here, guys, they want your money. Their job is to take your stop losses. Once they take your stop losses, that's money for them. Their sole mission in life, they are not your friends. Their mission is to take your stop losses away. So when all the stop losses start accumulating right here, right, thinking everybody thinks it's a sell trade, all the stop losses are just going to keep piling up, right? So what he's going to do is he's going to keep pushing the market because the more he pushes down the market, he, more people are confident that that's where you keep your stop loss. More stop losses are right there. Hell yeah, hell yeah, push it, push it, boom, boom. More stop losses. The more it's to sell right here, all the take profits are down here, all the entries are right here, and the stop losses are right there. Their goal is to get those stop losses away from you. So they're going to push the market, push the market, push the market, push the market. Boom. Okay, cool. Little retracement. Let me go ahead and get those stop losses real quick. Here's a, here's a lower high for you. You know, what do they teach the lower high people and technical analysis? So when you have the lower high right there and it keeps going down, move your stop loss right here. If you've been around long enough to know that, then, you know, you know what I'm talking about. If you're brand new, well, this is new information for you, but you're taught to move your stop loss right there. Cool. So they're going, oh shit, it's actually a sell. The market's going down. It's going down. Titanic, woo, young jock, woo. And what do they do? They come back on that ass and take your stops with no explanation. They just wiped you out of the market. That's billions right there. They sold hey, real you. quick. Sorry, sorry, real quick. Can you repeat yeah. that, please? Can you repeat I, that, please? Absolutely. Thank you for speaking up. I absolutely will repeat that. <clears throat> so look, guys, af, out of the Asian range, the first major move is always the fake out move. Don't fall for it. If you see the fake out move going one way, just know in the back of your mind that they're setting up the market to reverse and flip the other way. That's that's what that's like what you gotta know. So the fake out right here right? They shoot to the fake out. Cool. And make you think the market's going this way. You put your stops right up here, right? Cool. Awesome. Everyone is sold on the fact that the market is bearish. 
right? So they're, they're placing their stop losses right here and then they keep moving the market down. You, by this time, you're completely sold, right? Forget that any of this on the right-hand side is there. You're completely sold on the fact that the market's going down, are you not? Yes, you are. So what you're going to do is you're going to start moving your stop losses. You're going to start entering the trade right here. So let's just say that you waited, that you missed, but you saw it right there and it keeps going down. You're going to feel like, okay, it's going down. I'll enter the trade right here. So let me set my stop loss right here in the lower high, right? So what they're doing, remember, their only mission is life is to hit your stops because that's how they make money. So cool. All right. It's a sell. It's a sell. And guess what? They, they shoot large vector candles right up and then take out all your stops. If you place the stop right here, let me go ahead and start using tools now. I'm very novice at using tools, but bear with me. Cool. Your stop loss, guys, you're taught to put them right there right your stop losses <clears throat> your top right th right there right so if the market's going down and you enter the sell well, cool you start catching this candle you're going to put your stop loss right there if you miss that cool right they retrace it a little bit cool oh you see it's still going down you're going to put your stop loss right there right so what they're going to do is ah gotcha bitch boom reverse that and then clear you out you notice how when they reverse it they go right past where you're taught to set your stop loss. Ah, yep. <clears throat> That's the name of the game. It's cat and mouse, basically. It's you versus them. Only one of you is going to win. And it's, it should be you. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying now, right? Okay, beautiful. Just, just remember, it's kind of like a game, right? It, it's a cat and mouse game in a sense. So look, it, it's just the behavior. It's the psychology of the market makers. So they're out to get this, more contracts are being loaded up here, right? More and more safe contracts. So the more it's going down, people up here have way more money to lose if you spend, if you put your, your stop losses right there. So if, you, if you're taught right there, boom, cool. You have way more money to lose right up here if you're entering a safe stop loss right there, right? Cool. So yeah, they come back for the first round of stop losses because that, that's loaded with stop losses right here above that, that lower high. It's loaded with stop losses because that's where technical analysis teaches you to place the stop loss. They know that, so they're gonna come right back up and get it. All right, I'm gonna move on. So I don't, you know, I'm gonna sound too repetitive. Let's get progressive here. Now, remember this, I know what the market makers are trying to do. So I'm going to wait for my setup, right? There's only one trade that you're looking for, and that's it. One specific move, one specific trade that you are looking for. You're not looking for anything else. Once you find this trade, you can place it and go to bed. Well, not in my case, but you can place it and be comfortable with it. Be, you're, you're 90%. That's a 90 to 95% trade. That's what you're looking for. So when it comes to technical analysis, that, that's like 60%. You're going to lose, right? It's 50-50. You know, we're not in the 50-50 business, guys. We're not in the 50-50 business, guys. We're not here to lose money, are we? No, we're here to make it. So I want to take the highest percent chance of a trade possible. And, that, and, and I'm patient. So the reason, right, and you know how they sell, tell you patience is, is, is key, right? You're going to hear it a lot. Yeah, patience. Be patient. Be patient. But you're like, dude, what the hell am I being patient about? I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't even know what I'm looking for. I'm like, yeah, be patient. But for what? Like, I, I don't know. I see the market going down. I'm just going to go in, you know? That's, that's usually the psychology of a newbie. And they know that and they exploit that, right? And so they don't want you to know. Right, they're just gonna keep pushing the market. So you're like, oh, what the hell's going on? Oh, but let me just guess. You know, I am not from this point on, guys. I I will not. I have. I would have not taken a single trade. I would not have taken a single trade out of any of this. I'm looking for one specific trade that I'm gonna put my entire bank in. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put my bank on that one trade. I'm gonna increase the lot sizes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do everything I can. I showed you about lot sizes, right? That's kind of why I did a little training at first. I'm gonna increase the lot sizes to be $10 per pip, $50 per pip, whatever. I'm gonna max out, right? 
because the one trade that you're looking for is the money maker. It's the Brinks trade. And I'm going to show you why. So <clears throat> now that you guys know that information, right? And make sure you guys are taking notes <clears throat> because this is, this is where it starts to get sexy right here, right? This, this is where all the oohs and the ahs are going to come. So this whole thing is a setup. They're setting you up for the real move. There's this it, up to this point, it's a setup. Awesome, cool. Now, write this down, write this down. What you're looking for is an entry point on the second leg formation of the W or the M if, if, if it's going the other way, right? So what you're looking for is the entry point on the second leg formation of the W in this case right here. The entry point on the second leg formation of the W. So this is where I'm gonna introduce the M's and the W's for you, right? So when you're looking at the market, you really wanna identify your, your M's and your W's because that's gonna tell you where the market's gonna go, right? Now, if you can see this right here, it's setting up the W right there, setting up the W. My entry point is at the second leg formation of the W. When the second leg starts to form, that's my entry point. Right when the second leg starts to form, that is where I'm gonna cash out. That's called the Brinks trade. The reason it's called the Brinks trade is because you're loading up money in the Brinks truck and taking it straight to the bank. Yeah, dog. Yes, ma'am. You know what I mean? Boom. Give me some oohs and some ahs if you're driving some sauce right now. If you're getting some, if you're getting some nuggets right now, drop me some sauce. Show me some love on the chat. Yup, 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 yup. Thank you, thank you. Mind blown. Okay, I love it. I'm glad. I have a question. Have a question real quick. Yeah, have yeah. A question. Please, please, please. All right. So I, I have to pull over for this shit. So hold on. Um. So <laughs> when you, <laughs> so do you just wait for like the second or the third candle to see, or do you actually like put your trade at the bottom of that W? You know what I mean? Right. To know that it's going the other way. I am so glad you asked, because that's what I was about to get into. So. Oh, okay. you you see how that I got that circled, right? Yeah. So there's there's specific candle patterns that you're looking for. Write this down. It's the morning star, the evening star, and the railroad tracks. I think there's one more, but I can't remember it. Um, but you know, I haven't seen it, so whatever. It's the morning star. <clears throat> the evening star and the railroad tracks. And I'm gonna show you guys what those look like, right? Hey, Josephine, what I got right here? Morning star. Bam, why, why is it a morning star? Because it starts with a long bearish candle. Mm -hmm. And then you have, first off, it's three candles together, starting with the long bearish candle, the center oh, oh. candle, can be bearish or bullish or a small candle or a doji. The point is it has to be smaller than the other two. And the third candle is bullish. <clears throat> right, so right here, you'll have a longer candle guys. And then there's like a smaller little, like little smaller candle, just that like right at the peak bottom right there. And then that next candle should kind of just go at least like, you know, at least upwards maybe you know right above or below halfway of, of that candle somewhere right there it, it should just be past that right so if you can remember this little formation let me see if i can uh there you go so if you guys can remember this right it's at the second leg format if this is issued on the second leg formation of the w right and i see that right so if it's bearish bullish bullish right there right and then that second one that's really where i'm getting in if that's confirmed as a bullish candle the second one right after that so let's say this these both have to be bullish this is my entry point guys this is my entry point 
these both have to be bullish to com confirm the upwards trend. So if this one's bullish and that one's bullish, breaks, load it up, back it up. Where my money at? I'm entering a buy trade. I'm going all in because it's at the second leg formation of the W. They got issued a morning star and the definition, you know, you can, you can cor correlate morning star, AKA trend reversal, because that's what a morning star is. Whenever you see a morning star that equals a trend reversal, the trend is going to reverse. That's how I know it's going to shoot up. That's how I know when it's going to shoot up because they issued a morning star. That means it's a trend reversal. The second candle confirms it. I'm gone. So, Ira, so are you saying, I know you're talking about uh, British Pond right now, but are you saying this for like every, every currency or this nope. is specifically for this London session? Every currency. Okay. So every single currency is always the most volatile during the London session. Like, oh, even, okay. Even if it's like JPY AUD, AUD JPY, it's still going to be the most volatile during the London session. Got it. Okay. okay. No matter what. Ira, okay. Ira, quick question, man. So I'm just trying to look at the whole entire chart and try to recognize another morning star. Mm -hmm. um, just to the left of what we're looking at right now, in that downtrend. To the left of it, yeah. Would yeah. that be a morning star right there? I believe so, yeah. It uh, is, it definitely is. Yeah. Now I see the I see the only difference between those two things I see is that the uh the middle candle, which is bullish as well in this case, mm -hmm. the wick does not so that the low of that candle does not go lower than the candle on its left, whereas the area you've circled that candle does go the wick goes lower than the candle to its left i'm not sure if that would make a difference would, would that not too so much it's not a morning star not too much of a difference no all the wick really means is that you know the, they, they try to reach the price down here right they, they try to get you a little bit but the true yeah. actual closing price is where it closes so when, right. you see, when you see long wicks, that means they were probably like, like over here, that means they were probably just trying to hit some stops real quick. You know what I mean? They, they extended the price all the way down to try to hit some stops, but the true closing price was up here. And when you say closing price, you mean closing price at that time, closing price of that trade? Of that time. Closing price of that exact time. Okay. Yeah. yeah the closing it. price of that exact time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and if you're new, don't worry about Wix right now, guys. All I'm really trying to explain to you is the behavior and the method and what to look out for, right? So by now, you already know. So this is what you know right now, right? Coming out of the consolidation, aka the Asian range, the very first push is always the fake out, right? So you know that. Cool. And what you're looking for is you're being patient and you're waiting for the second leg formation of the W. So I'm patient, I'm patient, all right, cool, come on, you know, great, hey, I waited all this time, great, awesome, I'm waiting, cool, cool, awesome, okay, hey, do, do, can I potentially have my second leg formation? Oh shit, a morning star, that second candle confirmed it, let's go, I'm in. Now guess what happened, guys, look, look, look what happened. Now this is a little weird because this was a Friday and it was going on to the weekend, so usually when there's a weekend, like, they can do whatever they want, really. It's kind of like there's no rules. So there's this huge gap right here, right? <clears throat> it's weird, but it's there, right? Because they can just start it, right, almost anywhere they want to. But let me show you guys something real quick. Ready for another ooh-ah? I'm on the GBP USD. The GBP USD. Look at look look at the chart, right? Look at look at look at how it looks, right? I'm gonna go over to GBP JPY and tell me if you see a similarity. Do you guys see the difference, or do you guys see that how similar they are? Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go to the GBP AUD and see if there's a if it, if it looked the same. Oh, 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 oh! You guys see it? Ooh, ooh. You guys see that W still, right? But wait, there's more. Hold on, hold on. Let me go to the GBP CAD real quick. Ooh, 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 
Oh, 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 yep. It's kind of the same, right? Same shit, different toilets, I would say. Out of the consolidation, out of the Asian range, they drop down, boom, bam, boom, hit the same thing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, and just show you right here on the GBP JPY because this actually is like the more complete version of what I'm actually trying to teach you. Uh, hey, Iram. Yeah, what's up? Just a little side note here that um, the reason why you're not seeing that candle on the other pairs, mm -hmm. like I'm assuming you're, you're switching because you wanna show this candle here. The reason right. you're, you're not <clears throat> seeing it, it has to do with the broker. So right, right now, as you can see, you're looking at a pair from Owanda. Oh, and wow. if you were to look at the GBP USD from Owanda as well, it would have that candle there. But you're looking at it from another broker, like uh, FX, whatever it is that you have. So right. yeah, so that's the reason why all of the, uh, <clears throat> all the pairs from the, uh, from the broker FXCM don't have that candle in there. So that's all I want to say. Interesting. Yeah, my- Those are seen. My girl dropping the knowledge, yes. Right, hell yeah. <laughs> Canada in the building. Hey, look out for her candle training because Josephine's going to throw down one of these days on some candles. So I'm excited for that one. <clears throat> so, so check this out. So cool. You guys see what I'm talking about, right? You guys see that W. This is probably the best W you'll ever see, right? Everything else is gonna be, you know, they usually switch it up and it becomes a little bit diverse, but we'll get there when it gets there. So look at this. So remember how I told you that the initial move is a setup, right? And here, here's, here's where it starts to click. Cool. The initial push is the fake out because why? All the money is right here. They want this money. The money's sitting right here, but they're not just gonna go get it. They're not gonna just shoot out the Asian range and get it. No, they want more money to stack up right there. And the only way to get more money to stack up right here is if you push the market down and get people to put their stop losses there because they think it's going down. That's the only way you're gonna pile up the money. So once the market makers have as much money as they need, right? Once they have all the contracts that they need, right? Once they have everything piled up here, everything that they need, what do you think they're gonna do? Bam, they're gonna shoot that large ass vector candle all the way to the top, clear the stops above the Asian range and bam, they got your ass. Billions and millions and millions and billions of dollars. Got you. With one damn vector candle. One damn candle just cleared out your stops. You guys seeing this shit? It's crazy. The, when you start to really understand this, that's when you're gonna be able to trade in line with them. You are gonna catch each and every one of these large ass candles right there. That's what you want. So when I say guys, you know, you can trade technical analysis, right? But those are smaller percentages. This, you just wanna, you just wanna place one trade and get on with your life. You can potentially be done for the week here, right? You can pay your rent in that one trade. Think about that. You want to pay your rent? Let me place one trade. Bam. You just paid your rent in one trade. And I'm just showing you how. It's always going to be at the second leg formation when they issue you that reversal. That's when you know it's going to shoot up. Let, moving on. Let me go ahead and move on. Cool. You guys get it, right? Awesome. Let me show you where it starts to repeat. Right here. Now, this doesn't look exactly the same because it's not going to look the same. The market makers, they're, tr they're going to try to confuse you, right? They, they, it would never make sense for them to make everything look the same every single day. But guess what? The same behaviors are every single day. I'm going to show you how. Watch. <clears throat> cool. So what did I do right off the bat? My Asian range, that's 1800. This is Eastern time, by the way. So 1800 to my two o'clock. I always highlight that, boom, that's the Asian range. What did I say out of the Asian range is gonna happen? Bam, 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 it goes down, fake out, bam, exactly, Barry knows, fake out. Now look, look at this. So I showed you guys what uh, a morning star was, right? <clears throat> morning star, think of it like this. 
In the morning, the sun rises, AKA the trend rises. That's a morning star. In the evening, the sun goes down, AKA the trend goes down. That's probably the best way I can explain it. Morning star, sun goes up. That means the trend's going up. This is what a morning star looks like. And the evening star is just the same thing, but opposite, right? So understand that. And that's, that's, what, that's what that looks like. So cool. I want to show you guys what the railroad tracks look like. As you can see, I've already been searching it, but. <clears throat> Cool, right here. These are railroad tracks. So you have a bearish railroad, railroad track or a bullish. I'm sure you guys can tell the difference. Bearish, you know, so the anatomy of a railroad track is it's two candles that look the same, same size, same length and everything. Like you can get away with the slight like size difference, slight, you know, but if it's too, if it's too, too big of a difference, it's not. The more screen time you put in, the more you become familiar with this, the better you'll be at identifying it and be, be sure of yourself, right? You'll be, come, so that's where it comes putting in the time, right? The screen time. The screen time comes to try to identify the different trends and diff, the diversity you're gonna hit. So you can still be comfortable in taking the trades, right? The last thing you wanna do is guess. So cool, this is what the bearish, this is what the, the, the railroad tracks look like. So it's bearish because the second candle is a bearish candle. So that tells you the, the, it's going to go where? Up or down? If the second, remember the second candle, it's bearish, it's going down. Down. Yes, yeah, sir. Exactly. A bullish rail, railroad track. If the second candle is bullish, it's going up. Now, remember, you want that second candle, right? You always want to wait for that second candle just to confirm it, right? You don't want to just go based off that. You want to wait for that second candle to finish forming to confirm it. But that's what it looks like. You know, that's, that's just what you're about to see right now. Cool. Quick so question, Ira. Yeah, what's up? This is, uh, this obviously isn't all the time though, right? Like it's not all the time that you'll see uh, a bullish candle and then just because there's a bearish next to it, that means trends going down. So is it specific to a certain occurrence or? So you wanna you want to have that confirmation candle right after it, right? So, you know, when it comes to your screen time, right? You wanna spend time looking at these candles just to kind of identify them. And there's little, there's little indicators, you know, that tell you, oh, hey, look, like I have an evening star indicator and a morning star indicator. I honestly don't know how to use indicators for real. Um, so I-, I Oh, so- so railway tracks is after a morning star. No, well, so morning star and railroad tracks are the, it's the same thing basically. They just they just mean that a trend reversal is coming or some sort of reversal. Because I just mean if you know you're often going to have a bullish candle and then a bearish candle, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the third candle is going to be bearish as well. You can have a bullish candle, bearish, and then bullish, bullish bearish bearish bullish you know what i mean like it's not well, just the fact that you yeah. have a bullish candle and then a bearish candle doesn't mean you have a trend reversal does it so look at here right so perfect example you know i'm glad you asked because that's what i'm about to explain right here so look um if you guys can see that right there yeah you guys had the asian range cool it faked out then it issued now this is a w now it's weird right it's weird but it is w Right. And you're going to the point where you really start getting good is when you are able to identify the diversity of the way the W's and the M's look. So there's different looking as W's and M's and, and you're just going to have to get good at identify what's what. And that's when you really start to get good. Right. So this is a W, you know, it looks weird. It's not as beautiful as that last one, because this is like the definition of a W. But, you know, it, it's 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 W. So. Cool. It comes down, cool, pulls back up and it pulls right back down. And then what, what tells me is that it issued that railroad tracks. And then immediately right after this bullish railroad track, it was followed by another bullish railroad track. 
I mean, not a non rose. It was followed by a bullish candle. The second bullish candle just confirmed that to me. I'm going to get in right on the second or third candle right there. That's, that's my entry point on yeah, the second or the third candle. Yeah. You mean second or third after the railroad tracks? I'm Correct. Sorry, I just, okay. Hey, Ira. Yeah. I am. I feel like I would like to just um, clarify for Jeremy his question because sure. I uh, I understand his question and I feel like um, so you're gonna see those candles form all over the place, but you don't want to concern yourself with everything. You're only looking for it at a certain location. So it's like <clears throat> you're not concerned with um that pattern anywhere else but where you're looking for it if that makes Second sense leg formation exactly exactly Joseph. you're looking exactly. For, um, so you're I looking think for I know a what w. You mean. if you if you can follow my train of thought you're looking for a w or an m and on yeah. the second leg formation you're waiting for a candlestick confirmation okay so that's so it's after it's the occurrence of a w or an m that's what i okay that's exactly. what I want. The second leg formation of the W or the M, you okay. want to see a confirmation with a candlestick pattern. So okay. there could be tweezer top, or you call them railroad track patterns all over, left and right, all over the place. But that's, that's what, not I mean. what you're looking at. You're looking for it at that specific location, either a morning that's what star I thought. Okay. or an evening star or a double. Star. Yeah, because you see it, you so, see a little morning star right here too. You know what I mean? But that doesn't mean that, you know. And, and it goes up, you know. So that's that's what uh, it, you can see them anywhere. You can see it. So if they if it happens right here, well then you know it, it can go right there. You know it could go up. So if you see a morning star right there, boom. And yeah, yeah. If you're scalp trading, yeah, it'll go up. It, it's probably not going to shoot up miles, right? The only time it's going to shoot up miles, it's on that second leg formation of the W, and that's the only thing you want. Can you use your mouse just to show us the W, like where you see the W? What's the exact W? Right can you here. use those like line things to like do every leg of the W so we could see the whole thing? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, Josephine, I didn't do that shit. <laughs> All right, so um, <laughs> hover, yeah, go down slightly and to the right. Click on that for a split sec and mm -hmm. no, hold it right there. Do it again and go in the box so I can see. No, it's. It's not in there. Okay, go to the next one. Go is it right here? No, go, no, go down. <clears throat> um, you got to open these boxes. Yeah, go that one, that one right there. The one with the circle, click on that. The brush? Oh, no, path. It's the one that says path. Take that. Okay, so wherever you click, it's going to create a path. So click on it. And then when you want to change direction, click again. Keep, then click again. And when you're done, you ought to click twice. Okay. And you can change the color if you want or make it like bolder so people could see, like the line could be a little thicker if you want. That would be done right there, exactly. That's a W. You can That's a W. So much. Neon green or something. Would see yeah. better. There you yeah. go. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, you're uh, only, you're only looking for it there. So you're only looking for the railroad road tracks on the second leg formation of the W. Of the W. Okay, That's, I understand now. Okay. Make it simple for yourself, right? Because you see railroad tracks everywhere else. Yeah, that that definitely could signal that it's going to go somewhere else, but it's not going to go that far, right? It's just scalping. Right, we're not scalping here. We're the, we're taking that one brink straight, and you, you always dream of getting that big ass wave, right? Well, this is the answer to your dreams, right here. So that would have been a uh, one three eight four. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. so check this out. That would guys. have been one three eight four hundred to one three nine one hundred. So that would have been seven hundred so pips. Yeah, so yeah, so check this out, right? This is a rule of thumb that I, I, I actually skipped past on the first on the first explanation, but I'm gonna kind of go back so I can show you because remember, 
this is going to be the exactly the same thing session uh, day in day out right the exact same concept if you can master this concept you're good and it's not even that hard to get right so listen the way you know how deep how far up it's going to go it, it can range sometimes it'll go 50 pips to 75 pips other times it'll go 200 pips right the way you're going to figure out how deep it's going to go is because as a rule of thumb, there's always three pushes to the high. Uh -oh. Write that down. Three pushes to the high if it's going up. Three pushes to the low if it's going down. But three pushes to the high. So check this out right here. Here's one push, right? So I could write a huge one right there if I knew how to use the pencil. There's two pushes right there, come back, retrace. And then there's a third little push right there. Once that third push is done, it's gonna consolidate and go down and just start, you know, doing this other, other stuff. Probably go down, but that's the end, that's it, that's it. You wanna get out, you're done. It's not going up anymore. It's not, a, it's not, a, it's not a buy trade anymore, you're done. Once that third push is finished to the top, you're done, it's over. You, you don't need to be on that trade anymore. You caught the whole enchilada. You caught it from here, from the top of the third put, from down here, from the bottom to the top. Three pushes to the high, get out. Three pushes to the high, get out. Are you looking at the hour chart right now? No, always trade 15 minutes and never look at anything else. Okay. That's it. 15 minute chart. That's it. You don't want to look at anything else. And the reason that you want to, I mean, unless you're swing trading, then maybe you can look at the, the hour, or like the four hour, right? But that's not what we're doing. Always, 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 always. And do not change it. Look at the 15 minute chart. The reason you want to look at the 15 minute chart is because it develops the best story intraday. Because we're intraday trading. Intraday, it's going to give you the best story of the price action that happened throughout each session. One hour candles, right? Is it's it's, it's, it's going to give you probably like six candles if you're using a one hour, like per session, six hours per session. It's not really going to tell you a story, right? Yeah, 15, yeah, yeah. Right? It makes sense. So 15 minute candles, though, those kind of expand a little bit. If you use the one minute candles, that's way too much. You know, even the five, like you, you could get away with the five, really, but that's still kind of like too much, you know? 15 minutes candles is perfect. That's the perfect amount of, of, of candles to tell you what the actual price movement in, uh, in the market during the sessions, in between the sessions. I hope I'm dropping some sauce for you guys, really. <laughs> cool. Remember, guys, three pushes to the high. Again. Three pushes to the high. Look, caught that railroad track. One, retrace. Two, retrace. Three, that's it. Starts consolidating, going down. You see that? You catch the trade at the second leg formation of the W and you wait three pushes to the high and you get out. You just saw that twice. You guys wanna see it a third time? Yes. Sorry. Yeah, I might have to go back because I, I didn't do my markings here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cool. Let's see. Let me let me just let me actually go ahead and just all let me go to gold. All right, I'm gonna switch it up here. Hey, Ira, so I dropped kind of like a little summary of what you just said in the chat. When you, Whenever you get a second, can you verify if those are like, that's the proper step? Sure, yeah, yeah. Yep, you got it. You yeah, wait. You so My pleasure. Um, I guess if I was gonna, yeah, no, definitely. Um, the sec, the second leg formation of the W is is where you wait for those those um evening stars or, oh, so it, it if it's a W, guys, 
if it's a W, you're waiting for either railroad or a morning star because it's going to go up. Now, the, the M is, is when it's like the opposite way. If it's, if it's going up, if, it's, if you see an uptrend all the way through, right, and it's at a reversal, the same concept goes the other way, right, when you're going down. Except when you're going down, the way you know it's going to start going down is if you have that second leg formation of the M. It's just like a W, but flipped over, right? So cool. So as you saw previously, the first example that I showed you was just wild, right? Cool. If you guess, right? If you expect that every time, then you're gonna, you're, 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 you're gonna shoot yourself in the foot here because the rule of thumb is catch the second leg formation of the W, three pushes to the high, get out and you're watching it. So look, look at this, right? Asian range. Cool. Does a little push down, right? Right. Oh, hey. Oh, they confused you. It, it went back up. No, that, that's cool. That's fine. It's the second leg formation that they're, that they're, they're issuing. So like I said, you'll get really good when you start being able to see the variety that they throw at you, right? But it's still a W, right? The last one had a deep ass drop. And it came right here and it came back here and then bam, right? But this one's a little baby one. This is a little baby one. You know what I mean? A little tap right here. Cool. It'll give you a little bit of love, you know? It'll probably wait till the next day, you know? Um, cool. So here, you got the W foreman. Bam, they dropped. What do you get? And then what do you have to confirm railroad it? Track. Exactly. They issued the railroad tracks where? At the second leg formation of that W. Bam. What confirmed it? The second downward Anybody trend of that candle. Exactly. Now, 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 how many pushes? Three. Magic number three. Magic number three. There's one push right there. Retrace. Two pushes. Retrace. Three pushes. Get out. Drop. Consolidate to the low. You're, you're done for the day. So if I push? By push, you mean it's going to be the opposite of whatever that candle is. So, for example, since this is an uptrend and mm -hmm. it's bullish, does that first push, is that indicated by that bearish candle in which it goes down to a low and then it shoots up to the second push? I'm just trying to visualize that. Exactly. So what you can also remember here is, um, so... It's when the retracement, right? When it comes down, um, I'm gonna write something on the chat here. Remember this guys, write this down. This is very important. And, and keep in mind, I've mostly been talking about um, the W and the buys, right? I haven't really gotten into the M's and the cells here, right? So the same method applies, but reverse. I haven't really seen that yet. So I haven't really experimented. I played with it last night and lost, <laughs> but I learned a lesson cool because I'm expecting that to drop tonight. I'm expecting GU, CBA, anything G, I'm expecting it to drop tonight. So we'll see if that's right, but you got to come to the session tonight, like later on, I think it's 1045 Pacific time. You're all invited, cool. But yeah, listen to that. So I dropped in the chat, WBBM. What could that mean? All right, that means you have the W at the bottom, right? So when it comes back at the retracement, it does a V, boom. That's the first, that's the first after the first push, right? The second push, is there on the retracement? Boom, that's a V, right? And then M at the top, that means it's gonna reverse and go back the other way. Thank you so much, that makes a lot of sense. It makes sense, right? So if you remember WVVM, that's because there's three pushes to the high. And if it's going the opposite way, then it's uh, M here, I'll, I'll write it down. If it's going the opposite way, it's M A A W. Because obviously I can't type in a, flipped over V, so it's A. <clears throat> I'm so glad that you guys are seeing this at a different, on a different pair, on a different time, you know what I mean? Like that's really, guys, if you get this, yo, you see that it's the same shit over and over and over again, you will make money. It's sad that most people don't know about this, but you do. Yo, Ira, can you show the M at the top? here because i don't see it i don't either honestly but i'm gonna assume it's this right here here <laughs> um <clears throat> i'm not really looking for that anyways because 
it's not coming out of the Asian range. So all you got to know is that that push is over. It's done. It's, it's done with the third push. It, it did its one, two, three, and then, you know, it came back down. You're done for the day. You don't even have to worry about this. It's just going to consolidate for the rest of the way. <clears throat> that's all, that's all you're going to see. You go to G, 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 J. That, 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 that's what you're going to see. Three pushes to the high. Cool. Um, here's the M maybe right here. You see that? But like just, when you're on the third push, <clears throat> how do you know when the push is over, you know? On, oh, well, I mean, after the third push is when the next retracement. There's not going to, I mean, chances are. So are you, just, are you just not setting a stop loss then? So, I mean, you can get out on the, on the retracement. So you can get out down here. You know what I mean? You, that, that's how you know it's over. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you set your stop loss for sure. So your stop loss, I'm glad you brought that up. So the stop loss, guys. Um, so I'm actually going to show you where I messed up last night. This is where I made a mistake. This is G, G. Uh, this is the Great British Pound and the Swiss Franc. Oh, look at that. What do you guys see here? Cool. Wait, here's another one real quick, real quick while, while I'm there. While I'm there. Just, I'm just gonna, so guys, I'm, I'm literally just gonna harp this on you guys. I'm literally just gonna, how the hell do you get a square? I'm gonna reiterate it over and over and over and over again. Can you go back to the one you were using with the W, that's the one that said geometric shapes, I'm assuming. So where the path is, the third one down, it might be in there. Uh, the third one down on the toolbar on the left. Third one down. Right here. All right, fourth, my bad. Oh, dude. Go. I need to know this shit. I only know that because you were clicking through it earlier, so don't worry. <laughs> but all right, cool. Just be, just because we're here, watch, watch this. Asian range at the very top of the Asian range where it finished. Um, shit, no, no, no. Eighteen hundred, cool. On Eastern time, to the lowest point. Uh, was right there. Cool. <clears throat> All right. What did it do? I'll let somebody, let me see. Let me pick on someone. Let me pick on a newer person. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Silvana. Yes. <laughs> you you want to give this a shot? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Go ahead and just, just, just break it down for us. Just, just uh, show us what's up. Teach us a little thing or two. Well, what, what, what's going down? Um, so we have, wait, what, what are we talking about? The Asian session? So this is the Asian range right here, right? The Asian session, Asian, Asian range. The reason I call it range is because it's consolidating and you know, that's, that's a range. So um, Asian session, um, yeah, cool. This, this purple box is the Asian session. What's going on after that? um well we see the bullish candles go down or the bearish candles nice fix yep yeah. and then we have the a uh, little railroad right that's a weird one right here it's a little weird ass one i actually got to figure out how to explain that one. Oh shit but yeah, I mean, there's something there. Oh, I got to figure that one out and explain it. But yeah. Isn't, isn't it just a side cow? Huh? Isn't it just a side cow where they are acting like they're going down and they're shooting up? Mm hmm. It was a fake out, yeah. But I'm trying to explain is like the lack of railroad looking tracks, but. I want to say, I don't want to call this a morning star, but maybe it's a, a bearish harami, which also indicates an uptrend. Oh, okay. Well, then, fuck. Very All right. Bullish, cool. bullish, bullish harami. Maybe that's the fourth one that I told you guys I didn't know about. So, thank you for, I'm actually going to write that down because I knew there was a fourth one. I just didn't remember it. So, what I see here, though, is <clears throat> after the Asian range, you mentioned. 
there would be a fake out. And mm -hmm. then there would be whatever goes down must come up or whatever goes up must come down. So you're expecting it to turn around and the indicator of when that's about to happen is either an M or a W. And mm -hmm. I sort of see it's a pretty crappy little, it's a non-obvious W, but I could sort of see it with that first big, long, bearish engulfing candle it would be the first part. It goes down, it comes back up a little bit right there. Yep, it goes back down right there. And that is a bearish Harami. Uh, sorry, a bullish Harami, bullish because it's going up. And the candlestick pattern, it's two candles side by side, starting with one long bearish candle. And beside it, there's a little smaller, no, it's not that one, <clears throat> it's lower. It's the one at the second leg formation, right at the bottom. Yeah. So the bearish candle before it is the first candle of the pair. It's a big, long bearish candle. And the second one makes the belly. They call it a um, mm. bullish harami, and it's supposed to be a pregnant lady. Like the, it looks like a pregnant belly. Mm. She's pregnant with the bullish candle. And it often indicates it's going up. It gives birth. You could see the um, bearish Harami is the exact opposite. And at the very top of that stretch, there's a bearish Harami. It looks the exact opposite. If you go all the way up, there's a long bullish candle right at the top, the very top. Keep going one more push up. Yeah. You see that bullish long bullish engulfing candle and the second one is a smaller it's one candle over though uh, to the left what's it called <clears throat> Bear, bullish harami well that one's called bearish because it's going down google's gonna think i'm excited uh, cool awesome yeah. yeah that explains it all right beautiful that explains that so yeah um, that signified a reversal on the second leg formation of the W, and then boom, what happened? Uh, let, me call on, the let me call on Donald, and then, um, yo, Donald. Stephanie. Yes. What's, uh, what's happening? Hello. Chilling, chilling. Can you tell us what's what's what to look after? What what's going down right here? So she said there's a bearish harami. Uh, I mean a bullish harami. So so what's going on now? So now I guess we would be looking for the three pushes. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, can you walk me through it? So I'm gonna go go go. <laughs> tell me when when I complete one push. Um, right there one or that would be two where your mouth is at now, right? And then that would be three. Almost close, close. Okay. So I go up and I go down. That's one. Okay. Go up. I go down. That's two. And then go up. Okay, Boom. I see. Cash out right here. Consolidation zone to the rest. You guys see it? Or I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't feel like I have to. Uh, you know. I think you guys get it, right? Now look at this. This is where I messed up last night. And after this, we can we can we can cut it. We can do Q and A. And then we got uh, Aaron Heck that's going to introduce a uh, um, <clears throat> uh, a nice, nice, <laughs> very very nice tool for us. So it's going to be huge. So we'll wait for that to happen here in a little bit. But. Um, cool. Now, remember how I told you guys about the M's and the W's, right? And I'm sorry, this is a, long, a little longer of a segment than I thought it was going to be, but I want to make sure you guys get it, and I feel like you got it. So W's, remember that. The W's are only going to form when the initial push out of the Asian range is down. That's the only time you're going to look. You're not going to look for an M when it does a strong push down. That's not what you're looking for. You should already know right you should it should just be second nature boom out of the asian range is shot down bam i already know it's gonna go up 100 percent. it's going up 
I just got to wait for my confirmation. I just got to wait for that morning star and that's it. I'm good. That's all you really need to know. If it goes down, it's going to reverse and go up. Because why? They got all the contracts right here that they're trying to collect, right? They get paid by the stop. So cool. So, all right. Three pushes high. Cool. Awesome. All right. New session. Bam. This was last night. So what's going on? So we're at the point where it's a midweek reversal. All right, that's called a midweek reversal. That's when the trend is getting ready to switch. It's gonna go up for a little bit. It's gonna do its couple days of pushes, right? And then it's gonna drop down, right? So what's really going on, it's like, it's, it's right here. So this was the Asian range last night. It pushed up. What does that tell me? That you're looking for an M instead of a W or? Yeah. It does, that's exactly what I'm looking for. What else does it tell me? That it's-, it's Is the fake out gonna be up instead of down then? So the, if the fake out is up, the trend's going down, right? So <clears throat> it's, it's a little weird looking here, but you know, bear with me. So last night I jumped the gun. I wasn't patient enough. It was 3.30. I wanted to go to bed. I was like, dude, just give me what I want. But the market makers don't think like that. They're going to stretch it out. Just because you thought it was there last night, and they got me, obviously. Just because you thought it was at 3.30 last night doesn't mean it's going to be at 3.30 tonight. I'm going to wait until the New York session or later to issue you that, right? So they got my ass 100%. What I thought was right here, cool. Oh, they, the, the previous two nights, they issued it to me around, you know, 3.30. So uh, there it is, 3.30, cool, hey, it's time. Hell no, that's where I messed up. So what happened was they pushed up, came back down, right? You guys see that potential M? I guess, uh, I guess this, um, trend line thing doesn't want to play with me anymore it's right. lower it's um it's not in that section it's a little lower uh the, the section below oh, are you looking for the one with the arrows or just a trend yeah. line oh yeah you're right the arrows you know what you could do when you want to see them yeah so go yeah where the square is no 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 uh, one one above out of that box out of that box entirely yeah there that one go down to the path and see click the star right beside it when you want like the tools it's going to start forming you a little thing at the top mm, okay. <clears throat> you see that you see that that um toolbar yeah oh, every time you put a star your toolbar will grow with all the things you like to use we're all learning here nice hell yeah thanks josephine see the best. cool so this is what i thought guys Oh, uh, fake out up. I already know it's going to be a trend reversal midweek, you know? Bam. Oh, hell yeah. My M. Fuck yeah. And I got the railroad candles and railroad tracks. I'm right with you, yo. That's what I would have thought that too, though. So it's tricky. Guess what happened immediately after? If J Belly was here, he would have probably been like, oh. Look. What happened immediately after? I'll move it so you can see it. Reversal, right? Or are you asking <laughs> what, about a specific candlestick? Oh, uh, the morning star? They gave me a fucking morning star. So what happened? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Assholes. <laughs> Assholes, man. Damn it. Just give me your Monopoly money next time instead, Ira. Oh, so look. <laughs> they, 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 they got cute with my ass they're like okay ira i see what you're thinking bam bah cool i'm gonna shoot you a morning star you real thought... i got caught yeah they gave me a morning star which is sure to be a you know reversal because that second candle confirmed it so guess what it shot up right but what i was really looking for is this this is the fucking m i was looking for because it gave me a nice little evening star right there. And then it dropped. Now, I got to be patient because there's a consolidation zone right here. So, you know, I'm thinking it's probably going to give me a double top or a triple top or whatever it's called, right? It's usually when you see these. 
Um, so, or uh, what's it called? Forget what it's called, <sighs> whatever. Um, but I'm assuming there's gonna be another fake out tonight that's gonna hit it up here. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, if you're on tonight's session, we can witness it together, but. So I are, you, are you still waiting for price to drop then? I mean, yeah, for, for things to go down? I'm waiting for the confirmed reversal. Yeah, I thought there was gonna reverse right here, but apparently they stretched it out another day. They gave me a consolidation. They cool. They gave me the M, right? They gave me the M. They gave me what I was looking for, right? But just not for. Yeah, it was just. So do you it. recommend just being like a little more patient after that? Um, the Asian range, the consolidation. Like, I guess I'm trying to understand where exactly you could have prevented the mistake. Right. Me too. Um, so yeah. Okay. I, <laughs> So, I mean, I guess if I would have saw that morning star formed, I would have just probably gotten out, you know, and waited for another confirmation. Because you're not going to get a morning star on a confirmed downward trend. For sure. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I guess I haven't been around enough to really see that happen, but I just based off what I know now, you know, maybe I'll figure that out the hard way later, but um, yeah, I got that confirmation that it was shooting up and sure enough, it did. One, two, cool. Now, my the rule was 32 pips off the initial high of the day. And I know some of you guys, you know, calculated that. Um, you guys were able to say that right off the jump. So 32 pips off the initial high of the day. I might've miscounted, I don't know but I set my shit right here. Bam, they got me by like three pips. Didn't really think this was coming because I didn't fully think this out. I didn't think they would do this to me. But they did. <laughs> Psych. Yeah, they fucking did. So that I told, I even Aaron, I think you were even there. I, I told you that, yeah, it's not like you, you, it's not like uncommon that they'll actually give you that M and then shoot it right back up. I even yeah, said that. I remember you saying that. Right? So, and like, then like literally, I jumped in and I moved my stop loss after you went to bed and I still lost. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it's, I was, like, it's like 48 pips or something like that. I'm sorry, bro. If I was up, I would have told you to move it further. <laughs> I would have seen that and I would have told you to move it further because they're not going to shoot up here. They're not going to come up here to get, you know, not, they're not going to come up here just to get Aaron. This is the safest one, right? I mean, maybe if it was Bitcoin, it would. Right. If it was Bitcoin, yeah. But when it's a, when it's a reversal and a confirmed reversal, you know, this was the actual move I was looking for, not this one. If I was patient and if I would have seen this and I waited for that, I wasn't going to wait until seven in the morning, first of all, but, you know, if I had waited for this, that would have told me what's up. Just being patient here. So that, that's where patience it, pays it, off. Uh, I, uh, I got my snacks ready for the night. Cool. So, so just to finish it off, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, remember, your take profits are going to be right above or below the Asian range. So your take profits are gonna be right above or below the Asian range. If it's a W coming down this way, all the contracts are right above the Asian range, you could safely put take profit number one right there because it's gonna shoot up so it can come collect it. You can bet on that. If it's gonna go- that one more time? Like sure. The... Absolutely. So, your take profits are gonna be either above or below the Asian range, right? So um, on the previous W, right? So, you know, here I'm gonna show you. So since it's, it's above the Asian range right here, right? Since it shoots this way, right? And you know it's gonna be a sell, your first take profit is right below the Asian range. Okay, okay. Because this is what they're trying to hit in the first place. That's why they fake you out. 
Hey, so Ira. It's going to be right there. And if it's, oh, one second. And when if it's like this, we can go to that sexy W. And if it's like a, like that, right? All the all the stops are right here. Take profit number one, right there, right right above. So take profit TP one, boom, cleared it. Beautiful. Okay. Cool. Uh, what's up, Josephine? So uh, <clears throat> I'm just trying to learn from um, like um, can you go back to where the M was? <clears throat> so like what you're saying with this strategy is um after the asian range there's a fake out you wait for the m or the w and on the second leg formation you look for a candlestick pattern confirming that the trend reversal is happening and then instead of maybe even just jumping it right off the bat you wait for even an extra candle in that direction, like an extra bullish candle for going up or an extra bearish candle for going down. So mm -hmm. if we look at this example with the M that you just gave, for me, I really struggle with this because it's exactly what the strategy says. Like right after the Asian range, there's going to be a fake out, boom, it happens. Then the M forms and on the second leg formation, you have a candlestick pattern confirming the trend reversal, those railroad tracks, you can wait. And then the next candle after that is another bearish candle, which to me would have indicated I would have gotten in after that second, like at that, that second bearish candle and I would have gotten stopped out. Like, right, it would have turned right there. So I find it hard to know what the mistake was when it seems like you followed the strategy pretty accurately. My mistake was- <laughs> My mistake was the patience and thinking it was this one than other than that one. Yeah, but how do you know, like, like patience to me, that just feels like the confirmations are there. So if you, you know, if you see confirmations on, for example, the other examples and you were, you're sitting there going, oh no, maybe it's not it. I'm just going to be more patient. I'm going to wait because maybe it's not it. I'm going to be more patient. But then you ended up missing that whole huge bullish candle because you were too patient or whatever and waiting and waiting so at a certain point when you see these confirmations you just got you got to trust them and act whereas mm -hmm. over here if you would have done that it wouldn't have worked you know yeah the only thing that's going to teach you that is experience really like so should we stick to the w's if a little easier to navigate at first well i mean you want to learn them both so if you can learn them both you know do it um I, you know, try to get good at both at the same time. I wouldn't just include one because I got too many examples of the W's that when the first M came, I fucked it up. So, I see. you know what I mean? So this is the first M I was ever dealing with, you know? So I learned from it, you know, never dealt with, the, with an M before, but now I have. And I was thinking that it was going to reverse right there, but I remember that it can go deeper than that on the reversal, right? So it went deeper than I thought. Um, and then, you know, I hit this, it barely, and maybe I miscounted on my pips, but, um, you know, I, if I would have just moved the stop loss right there, uh, I, I would have been, I would have been cool, but checks out, you know, I, it, it's hard because the real one should be above the um, initial high of the day. So it really should be up here. Thir about 32 pips off that one, because that's, that should be, that, that's the high. <clears throat> so, you know, cause guess what? There's that second one, right? You know, a little double top or whatever the hell that can come back and shoot up this way and then come right back down. If that makes sense. So if I would have waited for this one, then I would have had everything I needed. I should have known. <coughs> well, I guess kind of to clarify uh, what Josephine is trying to figure out, maybe um, I guess preventive measures, maybe huh. give it another hour or two, whatever past that Asian range to like, I guess to define that patience that we're talking about, maybe give it a little bit longer in the chart to develop to identify for sure on that M 
Does that make sense? Let me go ahead and actually get a little bit more technical with you guys. Um, here you go. Don't get confused, please. Uh, hold on. One segundo. Some indicators right here that I could have used. And <clears throat> um, I don't, I'm not experienced with them. I don't know much about them at all, really. Um, but what I do know is that uh, there's a specific indicator here that when it touches and it breaks a certain point, then you can fully be comfortable with it. Oh, okay. So don't, so I, I, you know, I'm, it's not something that I'm going to show right off the bat, right? Because it's just going to throw people off. Now you're like, what the fuck? Well, do I do this or do it? No, don't, don't even trip about it, right? Um, but I don't know too much about this to explain it, right? So I, I'm a little hesitant that I'm actually doing it right now. But I do know that there's a specific indicator called the EMA um, that you can use to leverage to just get a, a, a little second or third confirmation. It's still going down. My analysis here is saying that it's, it's done going up. It, it's not, it's not a, a trend anymore, right? It's not an upwards trend anymore. It's going to go down. If it goes up, well, then fuck. <laughs> you know, but it's on the third level. There's three levels to this, right? Um, remember that magic number three? There's three levels of push from the bottom because check this out. This is, what, this is what's really going down here. So what the market maker's doing here, and if you really think about it, is cool. Three levels on the bottom. One, two, three. Cool. <clears throat> and you, you know you you have to go on the one hour chart to really see the levels and the fifteen minute chart to execute. So it's kind of harder to see the levels here on a fifteen minute chart. But I'm not going to go on a one minute chart because it's going to fuck it up. But look at this, what they want initially, what it's, it's Wednesday, right? Midweek reversal, cool. They're probably gonna hit a little two double tops right there and then bam, reverse it. So, you know, they started the week at a certain price, right? And what the market makers are probably gonna do is, you know, they play around with it, woo, woo, play around with it, woo, and reverse it, woo, woo. And then they close the week at the same price just to kind of not mess up with the world economy. That's another little, that's like a little fun fact right there for you, right? <clears throat> start it, start the week at a certain price, cool, jack it up, boom, finish it right there. That, that's usually what happens when midweek reversals are issued. Um, another little confirmation here, and I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop talking, right? Because I'll probably talk too much by this point. Um, I'm in GU right now, right? Great British pound to the US dollar. A good way to confirm whether, you know, the Great Bridge Pound is going to go up or down just to get another confirmation is by looking at the dollar index. You're going to see that the dollar goes down, right? So the dollar is getting weaker, which means on the GU, the pound is getting stronger against the dollar. You can kind of check that for another confirmation, right? If you see that the dollar is getting weak, when you're paired up, when you pair it up with something like GU, if the dollar goes down, then that means obviously the Great British Pound is going to go up. So you can use that as a little confirmation, right? That kind of just tells you a little bit. So you can also look at this: EG, Euro, Euro, Euro British Pound. Whatever G does, EG does the opposite. Here, we're waiting for a W because it's, it's on a downtrend. So EG does the opposite, right? Here, waiting for W, GU, we're waiting for an M. You write that down too if you want. <clears throat> but those are little, little other, other little confirmational tools that you can use while 
you're breaking down your analysis, right? There's those EMAs that I'm going to do more research on. Um, you know, I don't want to present, I don't want to show people it. Um, it's you guys, cause you guys are still here. <laughs> so you guys get bonus material. Um, but I'm going to hand it off to Aaron Heck here. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely right there. So you can use those little confirmations like the dollar index. Um, to, if it's going, if the dollar's going down and you pair it up with, with the great British pound, and that means the great British pound is obviously winning. It's going up. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad you guys like that. <clears throat> Do you guys have any questions on this? Uh, I'm, I'm about done here. I hope this was uh, helpful. <laughs> So helpful. Thank you so much, Ira. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure for sure. Hey guys, take an hour break from being on the calls, and I'll see you guys at ten, or well, nine most of your time. Eastern, <laughs> so to ten Eastern, heck. Uh, ten Central, so eleven Eastern. Ten Central. Okay, thank you. All right, y'all. I'll catch you guys. Oh, yeah, and it's recorded. Let's go. Thanks, Ira. My pleasure.